The Dragonflight expansion adds a new reagent bag to WoW, which is a much needed improvement to the game. This is a major change to WoW's inventory system, but certainly not the first, and probably not the last. And in this video, we'll be looking over the history of the inventory in World of Warcraft with a focus on backpacks, bags, and banks. First, let's discuss the backpack. While the backpack can be thought of as a bag, unlike bags that cannot be moved, deleted, replaced, or have a particular type of item be specified to it, like how other bags can be specified to be only consumables, equipment, or trade goods. The backpack had 16 slots by default from the very beginning of WoW all the way until the end of Legion. In patch 7.3.5, Blizzard decided to give players 4 extra backpack slots if they enabled an authenticator and an SMM protection for their account. This brought the total number of backpack slots up to 20 for players who had enabled 2-step protection for their accounts. While this promotion was presumably put in place to curtail hacking of accounts, the backpack change did cause some minor controversy since it was an exclusive feature for only 2-factor accounts. A short while later, in patch 9.1.5, the backpack had its icon updated to a higher res quality. The Volpair Allied race added in patch 8.3 has a special passive racial ability named Alpaca Saddlebags, which allows Volpair characters to have access to 8 additional slots for the basic backpack. This ability stacks with the 4 extra bag slots, meaning Volpair have the largest backpack in the game with 28 slots, which is way more than the 20 for any other race. Although Blizzard stated in the past increasing the backpack inventory might break the game, the devs later found ways around it and realized it was not so complicated. With many bags being around 32 slots as the time right in this video, hopefully Blizzard will also increase the size of the backpack in the future to make it have at least 32 slots. Volpera players can still have 8 more slots and have a 40 slot backpack if game designers want to keep that specific racial trait too. Now let's move on to talking about bags in World of Warcraft. Bags have only really seen two major updates, one at the beginning of Cataclysm and one at the beginning of World of the Draenor. The first major change to Bags inventory came in Cataclysm with the removal of ammunition from the game. As a consequence of this, all ammo pouches, quivers, and soul bags were removed from the game. These removals had a big impact on the immersion and feel of the Hunter and Warlock class. Even though ammo pouches were not exclusive to Hunters, since Rogues and Warriors could also use ammunition for their ranged weapons. Ammo pouches also contained bullets for guns. Quivers contained arrows, unsurprisingly. With the removal of the arrow and ammo mechanics from the game in Cataclysm, this meant the bags no longer needed and they were converted into normal bags. Additionally, Warlocks needed Soul Bags, also known as Shard Bags, in order to perform various spells and abilities. In Cataclysm, the Soul Mechanic was reworked and the Soul Bags were no longer needed, so they were removed and changed into regular bags. The final bag removed in Cataclysm was the Key Ring, which might not technically be a bag, but it was essentially just a bag for holding keys. In WoW's early days, a lot of the dungeons and raids and other locations could only be entered by a specific key, usually obtained from a quest. By the end of Wrath, there were so many keys it was getting very hard to find and use a specific one. Cataclysm also removed a lot of the old keys in the old world with the zone and quest revamps, and the devs decided that keeping content locked behind keys was not needed, and subsequently decided to remove many keys from the game. With the very few keys remaining, it made sense that the key ring should also be removed. Cataclysm also saw a couple of quality of life updates to the inventory and bag system. First, a much needed search bar feature was added which let players easily find items by name instead of having to scrutinize their inventory. The second change was that bags that players looted or bought would now be automatically equipped into a bag slot, rather than going into the player's inventory and requiring the player to manually place the bag into a bag slot. The second set of changes to bags came in the World of the Draenor expansion. All of these changes were quality of life improvements that definitely benefited the game. The first of these changes was that quest items no longer appeared in the player's inventory. Quest items took up much needed bag space and could quickly become a nuisance, especially while leveling. The second of these changes was the ability to sort bags by item type and automatically sort the player's inventory. The third change was that items in the player's inventory now had a colored border around them to indicate their quality from poor gray items to legendary orange items. The final major change to bags in the inventory concerns the stack size. For most of WoW's life from Classic to Mesta Pandaria, trade skill materials only stacked up to 20 per bag slot. World of the Draenor changed this so that most items stacked up to 200. This theoretically meant 10 times the amount of inventory space. In the Dragonfly expansion, most mats from older expansions will now stack up to 1,000. This is, again, a welcome relief and in theory gives the player 5 times more inventory space than they currently have. With the addition of the Reagent Bag in Dragonflight, this might even be enough to free up a bag that was previously entirely filled up by crafting reagents. Now we move on to the more analytical and statistical breakdown of bags in the item inventory creep problem. Each new expansion adds new items, crafting reagents, materials, equipment, etc, etc. And with a new expansion every two years, those items start to add up fast, and a player's bank can only hold so much. For example, in the Dragonflight Alpha, cooking materials in the Dragon Isles are item numbers in the 173,000s. While of course every item in game does not go into a player's inventory, it just goes to show how much stuff is in WoW, and it's quite mind-boggling. So to make this analysis easier, first let's start by examining the number of bag slots and the total number of bags. 
When a new bag is added to WoW, it usually has two more item slots in the previous bag. Blizzard in the past seems to have tried to add a new bag with two extra slots in each new patch, but this was only really the case for a few expansions. Note that the following graph does not include any 16 slot bags or bags lower than 16 slots. This is because the basic backpack was 16 slots all the way up until Shadowlands, so it makes sense to only include the bags that were larger than the backpack when talking about bag size expansions. These graphs also do not show crafting bags, ammo pouches, quivers, or soul bags. The first graph shows that many bags in WoW are clustered between 18 to 22 slots, and that there is a big increased number of bags with 30 slots, which stands at 7. Here's a somewhat similar graph breaking down bags added by expansions. The adjusted value includes removing the bags added during the expansions that aren't meaningful to the game as a whole, that were recycled, or that are too low in slot count to be competitive when they were current content. For example, only Demon Hunters can obtain two specific bags, so those two bags are removed from Legion's number of new bags added. As mentioned earlier, some bags have changed in different expansions, but to list all of those comparisons would be boring and tedious. Finally, here's a graph breaking down the source of each bag. You can see roughly 39% of all the bags with over 16 slots in the game came from tailors, and the bags that are looted account for roughly 28%. The remaining third of bags come from other means. Before we move on to the final bank selection, let's go a bit over some of the miscellaneous trivia related to various bags. The first bag we'll discuss is Anixia's Hide Backpack. This 18 slot bag dropped from Anixia in Classic WoW in one of the first raids in the entire game. In Wrath, when Anixia's Lair was retuned to current content level, the bag was updated in patch 3.2 and became the enlarged Anixia Hide Backpack, which now had 22 total slots. Also in Wrath, tailors can make the 22 slot Glacial Bag. At the end of the expansion, Blizzard decided to heavily nerf the production of this item. And in patch 3.3.3, a 7 day cooldown was placed on creating the Glacial Bag. This was presumably done since specialization costs were taken off the cooldown in the same patch. This week-long cooldown is one of the records in-game for how long a player must wait until they can make another crafted item. Our next fact is focused on the three soul bags Warlocks had until 2010. In Cataclysm, these three soul bags were converted into regular bags with the removal of soul shards from the game. The first of these three soul bags was the Core Fellcloth Bag, which was a 28-slot bag that was made by tailors from recipe dropped in Molten Core. At the very beginning of Cataclysm, this bag kept the same name but was changed to only be an 18-slot regular bag. This soul bag from TBC was called the Ebon Shadow Bag and also had 28 soul slots. In Cataclysm, this bag was converted into a regular 20 slot bag. The final soul bag was from Wrath and was called the Abyssal Bag. This bag was slightly larger than the soul bags before since it had 32 slots. The Abyssal Bag was changed to a 22 slot bag when Cataclysm launched. Luckily, the first craftable bag in Cataclysm, the Ember Soul Bag, also had 22 slots. So Warlocks did not need to buy the new bag if they had the Abyssal Bag previously equipped. Demon Hunters are the only class in the game with access to not one, but two bags with over 18 slots. The first bags the Demon Hunters spawn with are called the Demon Hide Satchels with 20 slots. The second bag is the Vile Stalker Skin Pouch, which has 28 slots and is found in treasures in the Demon Hunter only starting zone. There are only four bags in the entire game locked behind reputations. The worst one is from Mr. Pandaria called the Royal Satchel. This bag has 28 slots and the player can only buy and learn the recipe after the Exalted with the August Celestials which is one of the most notorious faction reps to get rep with since so much of it comes from boring repeatable dailies. The final bit of trivia for this section is an achievement. Despite being such an integral part of the game, there is only one achievement related to bags in the entire game. This achievement's name was My Sack is Gigantic, and is obtained when the player buys a gigantic bag for 1200 gold from Pilton Harris, who was a vendor in the World's End Tavern in Lower Shatrath. Her name is an obvious reference to Paris Hilton, and the Blizz devs liked her so much they gave her an even bigger bag to sell in Wrath, which was named the Portable Hole and cost 3,000 gold. The name of the achievement was changed to My Storage is Gigantic in patch 9.1.5, which caused some controversy, as many saw it unnecessary, and just a PR show following the completely unprofessional revelations that emerged within the company. Now, let's move on to the final section of this video, Banks. An initial bank account is free to players and offers 28 slots to store almost any items. Afterwards, players can buy 7 more bag slots, which they can put bags in to increase their bank space. The cost of the bag slots increases with each extra bag slot purchase. The first slot starts at 10 silver, the second 1 gold, the third 10 gold, and the last 4 cost 25 gold each. That means there is a total fee of 111 gold and 10 silver to get all the slots. However, this does not include buying the bags that the player must then add to the bag slots that they just bought. When the player has bought all 7 bag slots, they will earn the achievement, Safe Deposit, which is worth 10 points. Orgrimmar is the only city in the game with 4 banks. For comparison, Stormwind only has 2. Northrend Dalaran takes second place for the city with the most banks since it has three banks, including the Underbelly. As another interesting aside, unlike a real bank, in WoW you cannot store currency within the bank, only items. Almost currency is not physical in game anymore, a currency tab or stash would still be very helpful at the bank. Especially for depositing gold as well, since so many players are somehow over the 1 million gold mark. 
The banks throughout all of WoW are run by some interesting unique NPCs, like the Montagues in Undercity and Glutonia in the Broken Isles Dalaran. There are so many to discuss that we'll make in a top 10 video with these colorful characters in the future. We touched on the Reagent Bank earlier in the video, but one more detail to note is that the Reagent Bank contains exactly 98 slots. The Reagent Bank must also be bought with gold, 100 gold to be precise. Thus, to buy all 7 slots in the Reagent Bank, the player needs to spend 211 gold and 10 silver. Since Warlords of Draenor, players have been able to craft using materials currently stored in their bank from anywhere in the world without needing to retrieve the items first. Currently in the game, there are 4 ways for players to gain access to their bank without actually being at the bank. We won't include the guild ability Mobile Banking since that only allows players access to their guild's bank. Since guild banks are so different, we'll cover them separately in a different video. There is only one way for every player to be able to access their bank anywhere in the world. The first step of the first method is to become a champion of your race at the Argent Tournament. This will award the player with the Argent Squire Companion for Alliance players and Argent Gruntling Companion for the Horde players. Next, the player must earn the Crusader title and farm 150 champion seals. Only then can the player buy an Argent Pony Brittle from Dame Evniki Capsulus, who is the Crusader's Quartermaster. Using this item gives you the Argent Squire or Gruntling a cute little mount, and the player earns the achievement Pony Up. Now, when the player summons their companion, the companion offers mailbox, trade, and bank services. However, the companion will despawn in 3 minutes and will incur a 4 hour cooldown before you can call on their services again. The Guild Herald and Guild Page also share similar functions but do not allow access to the player's bank. Another way to gain bank access is to use the Sassy Imp Toy, which has a 35% drop chance from the Imp Master Valisa and Tanit Jungle. However, the Imp does not always listen to the player, and the bank services is only one of the many services he can provide. In addition to only working in Draenor, the toy has a 1 hour cooldown, so it's not the most ideal form of bank access. The final two ways to gain bank access in the open world are through being an engineer and using Jeeves, or being a goblin and using the racial Hobgoblin. Before we wrap up the video, let's briefly touch on Void Storage. Void Storage is similar to the bank but with several key differences. Only trophies, cosmetic items, and special holiday items can be stored in it. Void Storage costs 10 gold each to deposit an item. Luckily, withdrawing an item from the Void Storage is free. The interface contains 160 slots and 2 tabs and costs 100 gold to open a Void Storage account. The system of long-term inventory management was first implemented in patch 4.3 and was meant to serve as an everlasting sword solution to items players wanted to hold on to as keepsakes, but that were taking up valuable inventory space. The lore behind the Void Storage is that it was invented by the Ethereals who utilize their technomancy to create an apparatus through which the pocket dimension can be accessed. Alright, and that's it for this history of video. If you have any ideas for future history of videos you'd like to see made next, please leave those down in the comments below.